Okay, when making your back for your guitar, we need to go back to the wood storage room and find a, another board of mahogany. And this board, we need to make sure that it's pretty wide. Eventually, we're gonna get the width on this to eight inches. So make sure the board that you choose is more than eight inches. This one happens to be about eight and a half or eight and three eighths or so, so that's good. Try to find a board that's at least eight inches wide, if not bigger so we don't have to glue boards together as much to make your back. Some of those boards are very, very wide. Some of them are not very wide, so be picky on this one for your back. We're gonna to go to the upcut saw and just chop off a length 22 inches long. Type in 22, start, it'll move our arm over, and then we'll adjust our board just gently up against our little stop. We'll go ahead and cut 22 inches long. Joint one edge. And we're gonna come over to the table saw and rip your board to a width of eight inches. Make sure that jointed edge goes against the fence when you cut this. We're gonna need to resaw this board in the middle to get two pieces out of it. But before we do so, just wanna clean up both faces on the planer. Just take off just a little bit off each face. So our first pass, we'll just set it exactly to one inch. And then our second pass will probably go 15 16 And we're going to want to resaw this board right in the middle as best you can splitting it into two boards. And we'll start on the table saw. And again, we're just gonna have the blade raised up maybe about an inch or two at the most. And we're gonna cut a little bit in. And we'll turn our board around and cut the opposite side so it'll, it'll cut a little bit off this part. And we're gonna raise our blade up, cut a little bit more, and then flip the board around and cut a little bit more. When you raise the blade to the max height, there's still gonna be a little bit left over that it doesn't get, and so we'll have to go to the band saw for the remainder part, but we're gonna get the majority of this resawn on the table saw. You're just gonna to wanna to get your board centered as best you can. If you're not perfectly centered, that's okay, but we wanna keep the same face against the fence every time, so if you're not perfectly centered, it doesn't matter. It'll still cut on the same spot. So I'm just kinda of eyeballing this right in the center of my board locking my fence into place, getting it as best I can right in the middle. Keep the same face against the fence when you rotate it. Now we raise the blade. Again, keep the same face against the fence. You can see there's just a little bit that it won't get and that blade has been raised up to the highest it'll go. So the last little bit we're gonna go to the bandsaw and just have the bandsaw split down the middle to get two pieces out of this. The bandsaw I want you to use is this large yellow bandsaw, and we've got to raise the guard up high enough to stick above our board. You can just crank this wheel, and it'll raise up the guard. And we want to make sure your entire board can fit underneath. So as soon as it can fit underneath, that's about as high as I want you to go. Don't, don't keep going higher, you know, just go enough that your board will fit underneath. And then we're going to use our fence 
on here. We'll fire fence into place. You can get this lined up and so that your board will line up with the blade right where you have your little cut mark there. So adjust that fence so the blade will be right in the center as you're making this cut. As I look on the back end here just to make sure that blade is going to line up right where it's the table saw cuts here. When you make this cut, it's important that you have good tight pressure against the fence with your board. If your board starts to wander around a little bit, your blade can start cutting into the thick part. It should cut fairly easy because there's not a lot to remove. So keep a lot of pressure here. And as you get cutting, watch your hand placement that we never put our hand where the blade's at. It's always going to be either back here or over on the other side. And we'll split this down the middle. When you open up your two boards, this is called a book match panel because you open it up like a book and you'll see a mirror image of the grain. So like this grain here is a mirror image over here. We wanna make sure we keep that mirror image. So when we try to keep these boards together in that same pattern. However, when we bandsawed it, it left a little bit of thicker piece in the middle here. And so we'll go back to the planer and we're just gonna clean up just the inside faces that are not flat on the outside faces they're already flat from before so we're fine on that face but let's just clean up the inside faces on the planer now these boards they're a little less than a half inch thick and uh, we're going to just clean them up just leave them as thick as possible we just want to make them nice and flat uh, i'm going to go ahead and set this to three eighths of an inch getting the inside faces all flat again you're gonna open this up like a book just like it's called book match panel and you need to decide because you can open it up that way or if you close it and then turn it around you can open up this way and then look at the grain when you do this and just see which mirror image book match you like the best and decide on that for your back to come together and it doesn't really matter but sometimes your grain might look a mirror image one way better than the other way so make a decision then whichever way you like the best we need to joint on the jointer the two edges that are coming together and we're going to do this at the same time so if that's how you like it we're going to close the book back up and then the edge here we need to actually sandwich both boards together at the same time and run both on the jointer at the same time to make them nice and flat so when you open up like a book they come together with no gap Again, you're going to have both boards together so that edges you're jointing are the ones that are going to be coming together like a book. Okay, when you go to glue these together, again, we want to have to be that book match style when we glue these together. Now, these boards are thick enough we could probably just put some glue on the edges throw it in some clamps and clamp it up with the bar clamps uh, however some of these might be a little thin and the problem is when you try to do these with clamps they spring up on you a little bit and it's just kind of difficult to get the pressure on it so what I've got instead is a little jig to help us glue these really narrow panels together so we're gonna do this with your back and we're also gonna do the same thing with the, the front of your guitar when we go to work on that as well so on this jig here, how it works, again, you're gonna open up your panel how you want it to go. So this, these two boards are gonna to come together and you would put glue on your two inside edges. And then we've got these little wedge blocks here. And what you would do is just kind of position these so that they tighten up. And when you tighten these up, it puts pressure on here. So we're actually gonna lift this up just a little bit. And we're gonna adjust our wedge blocks so that they allow your 
board to be sticking up a little bit. And then we'll put some pressure down. If you can't get it to go down, these wedge blocks, we need to just adjust them a little bit until you can press it down and then it'll hold really tight because those wedge blocks are there. I've also got a little strip of wood that has some wax on it. And you'll put that right on the very center of your board. So if any glue squeezes out, it doesn't stick to this board. And then we've got some spring clamps that you're going to clamp on to hold everything down so it doesn't lift up on you. And we just let it dry like that when you get the glue. So that's kind of the process. And it's good to practice with no glue first, just to kind of see how it's going to come together. And then once we know it's going to work, we'll go ahead and put some glue on those edges and get everything glued up. You don't need so much glue on this, but just spread it around so it at least gets a good glue covering on the entire edge. And this is just a little easier than using the bar clamps because your boards are pretty thin already. And just make sure that they're going to be nice and lined up even everywhere and again I've adjusted my little blocks there that should be so if I just put some pressure down there it goes it comes together nice and tight if you want you can get a wet paper towel and try to wipe up some of this glue before it dries it wouldn't be a bad idea just try to clean off as much of that glue squeeze out while we can before it dries Stick this board on again, the wax side down. And then we'll take our spring clamps and clamp it on to hold it in place. And let this dry at least 30 minutes, I, maybe even longer than that. This has got to be a good tight fit for our back. Okay, after you've glued the two boards together for the back of your guitar, uh, you can take it out of that little mold that we use to glue it together with and we now need to get this down to the correct thickness. Right now our boards are about three-eighths of an inch thick and we need it the final thickness to be 0 0.100. So we're going to go to the planer first and plane it down a little bit and then we're going to jump over to our time saver sander and sand the rest of it down. Now my planer, the minimum thickness that it can go to is about a quarter of an inch and we need to go smaller than that. So we're going to use a little carrier board here to run your board through. This carrier board again is exactly one inch thick so we're just adding on an additional inch onto this. So if this is three eighths of an inch thick and the carrier board is one inch thick, we're just going to type in 1.375 which is our three eighths. So one and three eighths. Now again, we only want to remove a 16th at a time. So if our board is already 3 8 our actual our first pass is going to be at the 5 16th. So we'll go 1.312 and then send it again at 1.250 and then let's go 1.187. And we'll stop there on the planer and then at that point we'll jump over to our time saver sander and get the rest of it sanded down. So again, our very first pass because we're adding it on top of our carrier board here, we need to add an additional inch. So we're gonna go one point, and then our five sixteenths, which was three, one, two, for our first pass. <laughs> your board over to get the other face using that carrier board.
Okay, when you come to the time saver sander, we do not need to have the carrier board for this because this can actually go down quite low. So we stopped at 0.187 on the planer. And our very first pass on here, we're just gonna go 180. So we're just gonna type in 180 start. And it'll adjust to 180. And then we're gonna go a hundredth of an inch smaller a time. So 180, the next pass will be 170, then 160, 150, 140, 130, 120, 110, and your last pass at 0.100 would be your very last pass. Two green buttons should turn it on.